How do React portals work? React portals are one of the coolest, like, underutilized features in React. They're also dangerous. Uh, binary, yeah, I worked at Twitch for half a decade, and I built a lot of ModView. Uh, very fun project, really proud of what we worked on there, and the team who's working on it now is awesome. Love them all to death. Yeah, I worked at Twitch for a while. So when I say we in that context, I'm specifically talking about the decisions we made to build it. So here is a React DOM tree. React DOM tree. It's going to be a traditional React DOM tree. I'll put it here to start. In here, we have our usual app component. I got a capital A, so it's clear. This is like the app that's at the root of your DOM. We're all used to that. And we might have some components on here. We have a head. Like the header component. And it's like your metadata, whatever, title. Maybe it's like an actual header bar or whatever. I don't care what you're doing with that. And you have your body. And then in here we have subcomponent A. Etc. This all click. This is the traditional React DOM experience. You have a root node and it mounts things. This is traditional React components. And what happens here is things render to the real DOM. So we're going to have real DOM. And for now, I'm going to copy and paste this. In the real DOM, it's not going to be an app. It's going to be like a div or whatever you return there. The header is going to have like the head, whatever else, body, A, whatever. But generally, like whatever this returns will be here, whatever this returns will be here. There's like a one-to-one -one link of where these things are and where they uh, end up in the real DOM. The way that React portals work is a little different. Actually, I'm just going to keep modifying this diagram. I'll probably regret this after, but that's fine. So the way React portals work, let's say we have a subcomponent here, B. Actually, we'll, we'll say this is a, a modal. So we want component A to mount a modal. But there's a slight problem. Component A has width 200 px on it and overflow none. Because of this, there is no way, and we'll say it has like position relative. For some reason, all of these properties exist on A. Now, this modal can't render high enough in your DOM to do that to be a big like full screen modal. If you had a button that has its own like positioning rules and all this stuff, and then you wanted to mount a modal in it. Is there overflow hidden? Yeah, sorry. Whatever, same difference. Hidden, cool. Overflow hidden, position relative. Y'all get this. You've tried mounting a, a modal inside of a button and not been able to because you can't follow the rules here. Yeah, you can't. You, you can't break out of a, a parent's Z indexing and render things at a high enough level. So what if we wanted to? What if we effectively wanted this to be a child of A, but where we really want it is all the way up at like app level? So we'll call this out portal. And we'll give this a color. This guy will be blue. And in here, we're going to mount one additional piece. I'm actually going to use, I probably should use squares for the components so that portals could be a different color or a different shape, but we'll do orange 
for this one. And we'll call it in portal. So now, as far as React is concerned, this child exists directly, or directly underneath. But in the actual app, what you end up getting. So the real DOM and the React DOM get an entirely different result. So here's how React portals or portals work. In React, you mount something inside of an in portal and you have a matching like out portal reference that it renders out to. And then in the real DOM, that's where it ends up going instead. So in the real DOM, there isn't actually anything here. This is just conceptual. But this blue portal from here, it comes in through here and then comes out there. Does this help explain portals? I'm gonna read chat and make sure people get it. It's called portal because like it, it is portaling. It's it's taking something it, traditionally with a React DOM, you're putting a button inside of a div and that's where it goes. But in sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you have a modal, sometimes you have a popover. Sometimes you have something that you want to move in the real app, but not inside of the virtual app. It lets you Move, it lets you break the relationship between the virtual DOM and the real DOM for your specific needs and use case, which is not something you will need very often. But when you do, having the ability to do it is mind-blowingly powerful. So yeah, so pretty much like every React modal component in MUI, the uh, like drop down, the overlay components, all those things, they all use portals for that. The reason I used a modal for the example is it's like, the most common use case where you want to mount a modal really deep in your app so it has access to context and things. Like, let's say A has a context provided in it. We have, like, user context provider here. And we want to make sure that this context is accessible in the modal, even though it doesn't exist as high as the modal should go. Because of that, we need to mount this modal below the user context but this exists under this like overflow hidden rule that keeps it from positioning properly. Position absolute does not work for this because if this guy has a parent that has different position rules, you can't break out in that way. Uh, how do I feel about having a modal as a child? It is a lifesaver to not have to build a whole global state machine to do something as simple as mounting a modal like to have i've seen so many apps have to re-architect themselves because they wanted to mount a modal and that's why packages like react modal and mui and all these things catch on because this is the intuitive workflow <laughs> cool yeah this is a good pattern i hope this helps clarify what portals actually do and what i've used them for so in the like example of mod view Okay, whenever I go to this, I can't do other things. So I'm going to kill that tab because it's annoying. So in here, all of these elements, all of these widgets are mounted inside of a, a like mod view uh, widget container. And we have like 50 in portals with like 50 widgets in there, however many. And then wherever you want to put it. So when you drag and drop something from one place to another, you're moving the out portal around. You're not moving the widget around. So this all stays. These widgets never get remounted or re-rendered. The re-renders only occur when you move the portal around directly. Uh, Hopper, uh, Hopper just asked one of my favorite dumb questions. Uh, why I always keep them rendered? Okay, well, why keep it rendered? I'm going to move chat over from the right to the left. Before I did the portal solution, what I just did there, moving this from left to right and right to left, since this is a nested user interface, these components are unmounting and remounting. So if this chat had logic in it to connect to chat, when it re-renders, I just disconnected and reconnected from chat by doing the most intuitive action possible of dragging left to right. Re-rendering a whole component and unmounting and remounting a component when I drag it to my dock and I drag it back to my app, 
is not an acceptable condition to kill an entire component hierarchy. It absolutely makes sense to not kill your components when you're not killing your component. <laughs> I have a feeling you will abuse this in particular, Maple, and I'm very excited to see what you do with these patterns. Also, to be clear, like the, the primitive that React gives for this, the like react dot, react dom dot create portal kind of sucks. Uh, I use React in portal out portal. There's a really minimal portal component package. Yeah, Re React reverse portal. This is such a cool little package that gives you, I'll just show you the syntax because it's dope. You can make a portal node by calling portals.createHTML portal node. You can do this outside of React too if this is deterministic. It's magic. And what we do with this guy is we have an array where we create a portal node for every widget. We then pass the node in here to where we render like each in portal with the expensive component as it shows here. And then somewhere else you can pass the out portal node and wherever you import and render that out portal is where that now will render or render. Super cool. It gives you like a declarative method to define a, a node entity that binds a react dom node to an other world real world node like the, or real dom node and control the override there jason just asked so it's like go to for html honestly kind of yeah this is like go to from react dom to real dom and it's so cool it's not useful for a lot of things but when you there's a specific type of problem that you're going to bash your head against in the future just at some point you're going to run into it and this is going to save your life do I have the start already? Because if I don't, I need to do that. I don't. It has 328 stars. It just bumped to 334. So y'all are clearly taking a look. I'll share that in chat. Thank you guys again so much. Uh, React D&D is in a bit of a rough state. Uh, React... Uh, React use... Gesture is probably the direction I would go. I might just be biased because Poimanders but React use gestures in a phenomenal state now, and you can do some really cool things with it. So yeah, if you want to do drag and drop, React use gestures probably how I would do it. They have a pretty nice syntax. You can combine it with React Spring to have these nice fancy like things drag around with a little bit of like a springy nature. Super good stuff. Hey, did you know that over half my viewers haven't subscribed yet? That's insane. Y'all just click these videos and listen to me shout and hope that the algorithm is going to show you the next one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, maybe even the bell next to it so that you know when I'm posting videos. Also, if you didn't know this, almost all of my content is live streamed on Twitch while I'm making it. Everything on the YouTube is cuts, clips, whatever from my Twitch show. So if you're not already watching, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash Theo, where I'm live every Wednesday around 2 or 3 p.m. And I go live on Fridays pretty often as well. Thank you again for watching this video. Really excited. Thank you.